Good morning guys, I hope you're keeping well. In today's video I'm going to talk about how to put hot and cold water services into your van. I got some really good comments off the last electrical video that I did where we produced that electrical schematic and I talked through the installation of the electrical services. So I thought it'd be really helpful if we did the same with the hot and cold water services and how you can install water into your van conversion. So for those of you guys that are planning to do a van build or you're part way through your van build, hopefully this will give you some useful information. Let's start off with the basics. How could you get water into your van? Well, in the most simple of terms, you could actually just use a canister and fill up with drinking water. There's loads of places where you can get free drinking water these days. You'll be surprised how many places you can get it. You can also buy it relatively cheaply. I mean, this six litre canister of water here in Europe costs about 60 cents. So that's one way you can get water in your van. Really basic, really simple. You just use it as and when you need it. Another way you can do it is with a pump system. Now a simple version of that is what I've got here. This is a 12 volt submersible pump. So you put a 12 volt supply on this. You've got this plastic hose here. You drop that into your drinking container and then put 12 volt power onto it and then that will obviously give you a pumped water supply that you can then connect to a tap next to your sink. Really simple, and really basic. We've actually got one of these installed in our van. I'll just show you where it is. The little 12 volt submersible pump in our van is located here in our drinking water container. We use this little 10 litre container to hold drinking water and deliver it to a separate tap on our kitchen sink. The little sump pump is inside here. You can see there, there's a 12 volt power supply. I've got a little disconnector on it there so I can disconnect it when we need to take it out to refill it. And then that braided hose there supplies the pumped water to the little tap on the sink. And then by the side of the kitchen sink, we've got this drinking water tap, which has got a little switch here. When you press the button here, that initiates the pump and it delivers the drinking water out of the tap. I did a video showing how I wired this switch and I'll put a link in the top corner there if you want to see that video. This little 12 volt submersible pump is manufactured by a company called Whale Pumps. There are other manufacturers that produce a little submersible pump like this on the market. And this is a real basic and simple way of getting pressurized water in your van. Going on from those two systems, the next stage is to pressurise the whole of the water system in your van. To have onboard tanks, whether they be under the chassis or mounted inside the vehicle, and then to have a feed off of that water tank through a water pump, and then that then pressurises all of the water in your van. And it's very similar to the system that you probably have in your house. Normally a house or domestic system would be fed off of a header tank in the loft, and then it would be gravity fed. But as we're in a van and the tanks are underneath the chassis in most cases, we need a pump to take the water from the tank and to deliver it to all the taps and the showers. So this leads us into the schematic that I've produced. I'm going to start from the beginning, from the tanks, and then explain how the whole system is connected, what all the individual items are, and I'll give you a rundown of all the parts that I've used to complete the system and how it all operates. First of all, let's start off with the water tank. You need somewhere to store your fresh water. We've got a 75 litre tank which is underslung underneath the van. But I think if I was building another van, I'd be tempted to put the water tank inside the garage at the back and that way it's automatically frost protected. Next you need some way to conveniently fill the tank. We've gone for one of those lockable filler caps that you put on the side of the van. It's a very simple and secure way to gravity fill your tank. This particular cap also comes with an air vent and then all I've done is I've fitted a little filter inside to stop any insects getting into the water tank. You need an air vent because when you're drawing water off the tank you need some way for the air to get back in otherwise you risk collapsing the tank. It's also a good idea to fit a drain to your tank because periodically you may want to clean it out or drain it for storing the van over the winter period. Our drain tap is underneath the vehicle and it's fitted to a bracket just near the sill. 
so it's easy to get hold of. Okay, now we need a way to pump all the water to our appliances in the van. What I've gone for is a Sureflow 12 volt DC self priming pump. It's got a diaphragm inside it which pumps the water and it will actually lift the water out of your tank if the tank is below the pump. So you can have the tank underneath your van and the pump inside your van and it will self prime. It will suck the water out of the tank and then pump it to all your fittings. The particular one I've gone for is a Trial King 7. It has a maximum flow rate of 7 litres per minute and will develop 2 bar pressure or 30 psi. To put that into perspective, one bar is 10 metres in height, so two bar is equivalent to 20 metres. So this pump will actually pump the equivalent of a six storey building. So it's plenty of pressure for our van. Just before the pump I fitted a little filter, so if there are any particles in the water tank it will filter those out before they get to the pump. And then just after the pump I fitted an expansion vessel. And what the expansion vessel does, it has air on one side of rubber bladder and water on the other side. And it's also pumped up to the same pressure as the pump, 30 psi, with the little Schrader valve on top of the expansion vessel. And then that just takes up any expansion and contraction in the system. If the system gets hot or cold, water expands or contracts, and then that gives it somewhere for that water to go. Otherwise you could risk having a sealed system with no expansion. It could get warm, the water expands, it's got nowhere to go and you could cause yourself a leak. And then after that I've got two isolating valves, one either side of that little pump set. And really all that is, is if I need to work on that system at all, or if I need to check the pressure in the expansion vessel, I can simply isolate those valves either side of that little set and I don't have to drain the whole system down. That is all you need to give you pressurised water within your van and then it's simply a case then of just piping to all your taps and appliances. I've used John Guest LDPE pipe. It's really easy to fit with their push fit fittings. You simply cut the pipe with a razor sharp blade and then push it into the fitting and you don't get any leaks with it at all first time round. They're really simple to use. So you'd use the same method to supply the kitchen sink tap. We've also got a shower mixer valve, which has got a cold supply and a hot supply to it. You could also then tee in and supply a basin tap if you have a basin in your shower. And then you could also extend it on even further to an external shower or an external water point. So that completes the cold water side of the installation. Now let's look at generating hot water in the van. There are many different options for providing hot water within your van. We've gone for a Truma Combi Boiler, which does our heating and our hot water. They also make a dedicated water heater. And there are other manufacturers that do water heaters as well. But they basically operate in the same way. They need a cold supply, so tee into your cold water pipework with a cold feed to the water heater. And I've got a couple of other items on that cold feed here. I've got a check valve, which is basically a non-return valve. So it'll allow the water to travel one way, but it won't allow the water to go back. This is there. If you open a cold tap, it prevents hot water being drawn out of the boiler and coming out your cold taps. I've also got a drain valve there. In the winter, if you want to drain the system down, it's handy to have some means of draining the whole system out. That valve also acts as a pressure relief. So if the pressure builds up on the hot water side, that will automatically open and drop the water out the bottom of the van. And then as we did with the cold water services, we simply pipe the hot water off the water heater to all of the taps and appliances. Some water heaters come with a safety valve. This is in the event of the water getting hot and the pressure increasing too much. That valve will open and again it will vent to the outside of your van. With this pressurised system both the hot and the cold have got equal pressure. So you can use just standard domestic mixer taps. We have quite a special kitchen tap. I'll show you how it works. 
The main tap on our sink is supplied with hot and cold water from the pressurised system. Obviously you select hot and cold the same as you would in your house. It's a normal mix of valve and then you pull it forward to deliver the water. So you can have hot, cold or a mixture of the both. And then the other thing that this tap does is it has an extending hose so that you can rinse or you can use it as a shower externally and it has a couple of different spray patterns as well. It has a pattern that comes out the middle, you press this button and then it has a shower spray as well. And it will swivel right the way round with the sliding door open, we can use it as a shower outside. We're using the same John Guest LDPE pipe for the hot water system. It does come in different colours, so I have used blue and red just to distinguish between the two. And then it's simply a case of teeing off where you've got your taps or your showers and just putting an extra connection for the shower mixer, another connection for the basin tap in the toilet and another connection for an external shower if you have one fitted. And that completes the hot water side of our system. Using these push fit fittings and LDPE tube makes the installation really simple and really easy and it's something that I'm confident anybody could tackle. So there we go guys, that's all the parts you need to install a fully pumped hot and cold water system within your van. So there we go guys, I hope that's given you loads of useful information if you're doing your own self build. The schematic diagram that I've produced I'm going to give away free as a free download. So if you go in the video description below, you'll find a PDF link there. You can download your own copy. There's also a link there to a parts list for all the parts that we've used in our van. So if you're looking to source the same materials that we've used or the same products, there's a free download there as well with all of the links that you need. I hope you find these technical videos useful when you're building your van. If you found it interesting, please do give me the thumbs up. And please do make sure that you're subscribed. I know lots of people watch my videos and it amazes me that only 40% of the people that watch me are actually subscribed to the channel. So it really would help me out if you subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, it's completely free and it just shows you a little bit of support for what I'm doing here. So thanks very much for watching guys. Take care. Cheers.